everybody and welcome to part three of our Trumpeter 1200 scale hood build. Uh, in this video we'll be dealing with uh, the three main deck sections in the Trumpeter kit and preparing those for uh, the Pontos wooden decks and the resin and etch brass parts that uh, are also in the Pontos set. Okay just a little bit about terminology to start off with. Trumpeter provide three main deck sections and they call them the fore deck, the uh, centre deck and the rear deck. In actual fact the first two parts are what constituted the forecastle deck on hood which extended all the way from the prow of the ship back to the rear screens. The rear deck as Trumpeter call it is actually the quarter deck and I'll be calling them the quarter deck and the forecastle deck for the purposes of the of the build. So we're going to start off with the uh, work that we need to do on the front part of the forecastle deck, which is probably the most uh, complex uh, modification to do in terms of the Pontos set, because it includes the uh, anchor gear and the hosepipe openings and I mentioned in the previous video that I wanted to look at connecting the deck hosepipe openings with the exits on the side of the hull. Uh, to do that what I want to do is fit the resin parts that Pontos provide. So you can see that the hosepipes on the deck are uh, this sort of pear shape. You can see there whereas in actual fact they were more oval and Pontos provides some resin replacements for those. They also give us um, a template uh, which we can use to drill the correct position for those resin replacement uh, hose pipe openings. So we'll be doing that first of all and clearing up the excess moulded plastic that we're not going to need because that's going to be replaced with uh, etched brass parts from the Pontos set. So that's going to be the first job up today is clearing that front section up and once I've got the horse pipe openings in I'll be able to just work out whether or not I'm going to be able to connect the uh, pipes all the way through to the outside of the hull. So I'll switch over to the bench and we'll get on with that work. Okay so this is the section of the Pontos instructions that we're interested in and you can see that it uh, marks out in purple here the pieces of plastic that need to be removed uh, in order to fit the wooden decks and uh, that themselves will be replaced with uh, etch brass at uh, a later stage. So these are lockers, uh, there's bits of the anchor gear and the horse pipes themselves. There's a sequence for dealing with the horse pipes which Pontos describe up here. So first of all it's the removal of the plastic horse pipes which as I said are the incorrect shape. Then we use the template to drill out the new holes for the resin and then we can clear the rest of the plastic. I'm going to leave these bits in place because the template fits over those bollards and gives us a precise location for the three holes that we're going to drill. So I'm going to do that last. So I'll be using um, a rotary tool to remove all the bits of plastic that we don't need. Normally I'd be fairly wary of using a rotary tool on parts like this but because the area is going to be covered with the wooden deck I'm not that bothered about making the odd gouge or whatever with the rotary tool because generally they're fairly hard to control I, I think anyway. Um, as I say, I'm not, I'm not bothered about that, so we'll press on and get those bits uh, sorted. So that's done the majority of removal. I'm just going to go back in with a knife to uh, get that a bit smoother. 
and clean up to the point where I can get this template to fit nice and flat and that gives us the exact positions to drill out for the new uh, resin parts. Okay, so that looks flat enough to be able to position the template. That front bollard is a good marker for where the template needs to be. I think at this stage I'll just take that into place. Okay, so the next step is to just drill out ready for the hose pipes. So I'll just uh, chain drill around the shape and then trim the excess off with a knife just to get it uh, nice and sharp around the uh, template. And I'll just switch to a burr now just to clear out the join the dots if you like. Uh, and we'll just finish off with uh, a 400 thinny stick. These are really good for getting in to these tight spaces. Okay, so that's the first hole cut. We have the other two to do. Uh, we'll do those and remove, come back, remove the template and see what we have to do next. So there we are, we've got the three holes for the new horse pipes cut. Uh, they don't have to be absolutely perfect, bearing in mind that the deck's going to go over these and the horse pipes actually drop into the wooden deck rather than the plastic. So any raggedy bits are going to be covered up. So we've finished with the template. And that's what we should be left with at this stage. So I'm going to go on now to 
clear the slipways here and these bollards and other bits and pieces that we need to remove. Okay, so at this stage we just need to be a bit careful about where we're going with uh, the cutting discs because these elements uh, remain. We need to preserve those mouldings there. So just get close but obviously don't cut into them. Okay, so at this stage we've used the burr to get rid of the majority of the plastic that we don't need. Clearly at this stage we've ruined a major part of uh, a £250 kit, so there's no going back from here. Uh, I'm going to carry on now with various grades of wet and dry just to get this nice and flat. Uh, probably using the marker pen there as a witness mark again. Uh, once I've removed those I'll know that I'm, I'm level. So that's what we're going to be doing next. That's the decks all prepared. So the quarter deck here with all the bits of hatches and so on that we don't need all removed. So that's ready to go. I'm not going to drill out the rear uh, anchor hose pipe there. I'm going to leave that as is. I don't even know whether there's a, there may even be uh, a Pontos grating for that. I'll have to have a look and check. This is the rear extension of the forecastle deck, what Trumpeter called the uh, centre deck or middle deck. Again with the hatches and various boxes and so on removed. So again that's ready to go and the what trumpets call the front deck the forecastle deck that's all ready as well so as we saw earlier the hose pipe holes drilled out ready for the resin replacements we've preserved the bases for the capstans here the big lockers have been removed and at the back here as well and I was careful just to when I was removing this particular one just to protect the back of the barbette I didn't want to scratch 
that or damage it in any way so just went very carefully at that point and got the there were some mouldings at the back for what's called the wild cats basically they were, they were like a, a winch arrangement at the back of the capstans so I've got those off and they're going to be replaced with some etch brass replacements so that's it ready to go so we're just going to tackle how we're going to do these hose pipe uh, through extensions to the outside of the hull and I've got a few ideas for how to how, how we're going to tackle that The other thing that we need to do just before we do that work, or at least drill through, is to check the correct position of the front part of the forecastle deck. It might seem that it's just a drop fit, but when I first assembled the decks as a dry fit, I found that there was a gap when I assembled the shelter deck there was a gap here at this point at this quarter deck step and that's because the forecastle deck was ever so slightly too far aft and what that was doing was prevent because it butts up against the rear screens here the molding for the rear screens because it butts up against that it was preventing the shelter deck to come far enough forward to close that gap. So what I did was simply put the shelter deck in place and push it forward just to close that gap there at that point. What that does is it pushes the forecastle deck into the correct position forward and enabled me just to put a marker on the deck and the side of the hull in exactly the right position. So I can be doing the work on this part with those, you see the witness marks there, so that's in the correct position. And I know that I can then drill, do all the work on the hose pipes with that in the correct position. And when we come to assemble all the decks, we won't have that gap at the quarter deck step. Uh, if we had that, obviously it would just throw everything out, so I wanted to avoid that. So having done that, we can now confidently go ahead and do this work at the prow of the ship. Okay, so we've got the deck in the correct position at this point, and the resin horse pipe opening in place. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is packing out the area underneath here uh, and up to the deck level with some two-part epoxy putty. And what that will enable me to do is to drill through the putty from outside and up towards the hose pipe opening here and connect the uh, hose pipe from the deck to the outside of the hull. That's the theory, so let's give that a go and see how we get on with that. To start off with, I just want, I don't want to be just chucking loads of uh, putty in here, so I'm going to build uh, a shelf out of some thick plastic card for the putty to, to rest on. Uh, but I will pack out this whole prow area.
Okay, so what we've got is the epoxy is set. We've got the deck in the correct position over the top of the epoxy and just dropping the resin hosepipe in place we've had to hollow that out slightly with a rounded burr to allow the resin to fit inside like that bearing in mind that that will sit a bit higher on the wooden deck so we've got a little bit of clearance to play with there and I then went in with a drill to connect the horse pipe all the way through to the outside of the hull. So I'll just take that, take the deck away, and you'll be able to see that we've drilled through. It's just a bit tricky to get the correct angle because you want to be in the centre of the resin horse pipe hole and the centre of the putty in the exit there. So you can see there at the correct angle we've got a hole all the way through to the outside of the hole. So when we drop the resin in after the decks are in place, the wooden decks that is, we'll just be able to tidy up the join between the resin and the epoxy just smooth it out and paint over there so that should give us a good result i think so then i'll do the other two and join those up uh, then i think we'll be in a position to glue the plastic decks into place and let those set up i'll drill the rear horse pipe out as well while i'm doing that um, and then that should be us finished for this particular step I just want to check that the anchor itself will fit through the hole so I'm just opening it up a little bit with a burr and I've just taken the anchor parts from the kit and just dry assembled them just to make sure that the shank will go through the hole that we've made and that the anchor sits in the correct position on the hole side which it needs to be roughly in that sort of position. And at that point, the top of the anchor just comes through the top of the deck. So that's in the correct position now. So having done the work on the various deck elements, I've gone ahead and cemented them into place at this stage. It's just a simple case of uh, with plenty of contact a professional uh, to make sure that there's a good bond all the way along the whole sides and across the tops of the transverse beams that we fitted earlier on in the build just to make sure that the decks lay in perfectly flat and level uh, and it's a good nice tight fit. I also paid attention to the marks that we made at the front to make sure that the rear screens uh, abut the sides of the hull uh, as we dis again as we described earlier on in, uh, in this video. So we can now go ahead and remove the clamps and just check that we've done okay. And get rid of the tape. I also taped the decks uh, onto the side of the hole just to make sure that they were nice and tight. So we can get rid of the tape now. Okay, so let's take a look. We've got the alignment marks there on the prow of the ship. Let's just check with the shelter deck to make sure that uh, we're still okay. Although there's not much we can do about it at this stage if it's wrong. There we are, we've got a nice that nice tight fit that we were looking for on the back screens there. So that's all good. Okay, so what's next up then? The, the, there's plenty of work to be done on the shelter deck, but before we do that, there's elements uh, of superstructure that fit underneath that, and there's plenty of uh, work to be done there before we can even think about fitting this particular part. So that's all the work that we set out to do for part three of the video um, but next up 
what we just need to be doing is I'll do a bit more work on the whole sides uh, really in preparation to fit the D uh, the etch brass degaussing coil that we uh, described earlier and there's some other bits and pieces of uh, etch brass to go on this the torpedo tube uh, doors for example need to be replaced with etch brass Another thing that I'm going to do is, having been very careful to preserve the wriggles on the portals along the side of the hull when I replaced the plastic degaussing coil, uh, I realised through uh, a comment that I received from one of our new subscribers, uh, Klaus from Germany. Thanks Klaus for this. He pointed out that the Pontos etched sheets contain a number of unnumbered Portal parts, which include the wriggles uh, and uh, scuttles and so on. So I'm actually going to go ahead and smooth these all off and replace them with the etch brass parts that are mysteriously there in the Pontos set that we didn't we didn't realise. So again, Klaus, thanks for that tip and pointing that out to me. Just on the uh, etched sheets. One of the things that I'm also doing is it's a very laborious task but I'm working through the Pontos instructions in terms of their positioning of the etch brass and I've make, I'm making a list of all the etch brass parts uh, where they appear in the instructions and what fret they appear on as well because I think there are 14 or 15 maybe more frets uh, in the Pontos set. So rather than at a later stage when I get into lots of etch work, rather than be searching around for the frets, I've just spent this time uh, now to map out the uh, etch brass parts. So I'm hoping that that will come in really useful a bit later on in the build. And I'm probably two thirds of the way through that at the minute. So when I'm done with that, I'll just uh, show you that in a bit more detail so you can see what I've done on them. Probably try and make that available to those of you that have got the Pontos set and are stepping out on this on this project alongside me. I won't be doing anything with the propeller mounts uh, at the back of the ship uh, just yet until it's uh, ready for painting, and that's because it's very easy to damage those once they're in place. Uh, these brackets, uh, although they've got pretty substantial attachment points, they are very easy to snap off. Uh, particularly with a model like this which is so big and that you've got to be manoeuvring around so I want to get the whole side work done first before I do that so that's it for this one uh, I'll be back next week with the work that we've just outlined um, usually try and post Thursday or Friday uh, of every week with uh, the progress that I've managed to make over the previous week so if you want to pick up on any of those, uh, you can subscribe to the channel, just use the link uh, in the bottom right of your screens and it'll be great to have you along. As I said, I've had one or two really helpful comments this week, which has come at a critical time in the build, particularly the uh, notification about the portal parts in the Pontos set. I really appreciate that one. So that's it for now. Have a good week modelling if that's what you're doing this week and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.